Hello, doctors, and welcome to today's program. Spinal impairment ratings made insanely simple. Spinal impairment ratings are just that. They're insanely simple. My name is Dr. Kronk. I'm the CEO for the largest uh, medical spinal ligament injury testing company in the, co in the country called Spinal Kinetics. And I welcome you to a very short program today on spinal impairment ratings made insanely simple. So a little bit about Spinal Kinetics before we start. Spinal Kinetics is the only company in the country right now that I'm aware of that uses two board certified medical radiologists to make accurate measurements of the intersegmental motion that you see basically with ligament injuries. So when you have ligament injuries, you have abnormal intersegmental motion. There's no way to determine the severity and location of a ligament injury completely without evaluating the excessive motion that the ligament injury leaves behind. Spinal Kinetics, again, only company in the country right now that has two board certified medical radiologists on each and every study. All right, so let's jump into this. Permanent impairment rating. This gets so confused. So many doctors get so confused with this, and it's insanely simple. So impairment, what is it? It's the loss, loss of use of, or derangement of any body part. Now, key, derangement of any body part. When you lose a body part, there, if there's a derangement of the body part. When you lose the use of something, so if I cut my nerve to my arm and I can't use my arm, there's a derangement of the nerve that caused the loss of use of. So all injuries are derangements. All impairments are derangements. They're, so if you impair the heart, you've deranged it, you've damaged it somehow. If you impair the lungs, you've damaged them. If you impair the spine, you've damaged it. If you impair the brain, you've damaged it. If you impair your shoulder, you've damaged it. And it deranges. And it's the derangements that are the injuries themselves. So it says the loss, loss of use of or derangement of any body part, organ system. So every body part in the, in the body is an organ that helps to make up an organ system and or organ function. So every part in the body is important. Some are more important than others, right? Some are more critical than others. But an impairment is an injury. That's all it is. That's all it's ever been. So when somebody says, I don't know if I want to do permanent impairment rating, well, what you're saying, what the provider's saying is, I don't know if I really want to know anything about injuries and permanent injury ratings. And permanent injury ratings just means, hey, is the injury permanent? And the rating means how does it affect the person's activities of daily living? How does it make it more difficult for them to do their activities of daily living? Now, all impairment rating is done at MMI. MMI is maximum medical improvement. That means when you have an injury and now you're repairing the injury as a doctor and you take it out to the far, to the best point that you possibly can and you look out for a year ahead of you and you say, no matter what I do with this patient, this is as good as we're going to get. That's called MMI. And at that time, you do a permanent impairment rating. What's a rating? A rating means that you take a look in the guideline book and the consensus says this impairment at this time is going to cause this percentage of activity of daily living interruption. It's going to make it harder. This is going to become really, really clear. All right. All injuries, as I said, are derangements. If you burn the body, you derange the tissue. If your dog bites you, it deranges the tissue. If a bullet comes through you, it deranges the tissue. Now, all injuries are determined by how bad and where. So you have to have doctors that know what the injury derangements look like. This is so insanely simple, but it's not being done today, especially in the area of the spine. Too many providers today and too many attorneys and too many insurers and too many people in this whole injury space don't even know how the spine deranges when it's injured. All injuries are derangements of body parts. The spine is no different. You can have a fracture and you can have two ligament findings. One finding is excessive motion. That's picked up on radiology studies with accurate measurements. That's what spinal kinetics does. So you want to know if you have a ligament damage, you want to know how much excessive motion is there. There's 220 specialized ligaments that hold these motion units together. All right. 23 of those are discs. So a disc can also herniate. But if you have 
a herniation, the first thing anybody should want to know is how much excessive motion is there back and forth because did you shear the ligaments in the injury and herniate the disc at the same time? If you did, you're going to see excessive motion with the disc herniation. So all ligaments are worked up first with x-ray, an x-ray study, an excessive motion study to determine how badly damaged the ligaments are damaged. And then you have disc you can also have the complication of a disc herniation, which is usually performed later. All right. So whole person impairment. Um, whole person impairment is the percentage that the, the of the estimates of the impact of impairment on an individual's overall ability to perform activities of daily living. So he said, hey, we got these, we got fracture, we got disc herniation, and we got excessive motion. And when we when we meet these criteria, then in the guides, no matter fifth, sixth edition, in the guides, it tells us exactly, no one has to guess, no provider has to guess. It tells us exactly what the consensus is amongst all providers of how this injury, this derangement will affect the person's activities of daily living. Self-care, their ability to urinate, defecate, brush their teeth, comb their hair, bathing, dressing, eating, Communication, writing, typing, seeing, hearing, speaking, physical activity, standing, sitting, reclining, walking, climbing stairs, sensory function, hearing, seeing. So if I got an injury to my eye, I am going to have a hard time seeing. That may have me have a hard time walking. Now, it may not interfere with my communication. It may not interfere with my um, sexual function. So... Each injury then, so impairment rating just means how does the consensus, if you look in these books and the consensus says, gosh, if I have this, I have a 25% whole person impairment. It means 25% of these are somehow going to be negatively influenced. That's the easy part. So let's look at it. All right. Guy does a kick, gets an injury, deranges the body part. All right. That's what an injury is, deranges the body part. Now, treatment is fixing that. MMI is when we get this injury to the fact, to the point where no matter what we do, it's not going to change it at all. This person, this, this guy, this fighter is as good as he's going to get. At that point, we have MMI. At that point, we determine how much does that injury affect his activities of daily living? And that's called an impairment rating. And everyone should do one on every single injury case. There shouldn't be any injury case. You could have zero impairment, but you should rate it. So it means like right now with this injury right here, can this guy walk? No. Can he go upstairs? Probably not. Is he going to ride comfortably? Probably not. Is he going to have a is he going to have a problem with sexual dysfunction because of this injury? No. Matter of fact, he may want sex at this point just to take his mind off the injury. All right. So, is he going to be able to sleep? I don't know. I don't think so. Right? So right now, this impairment level, self-care, can he bathe himself? Can he dress himself? Right now, he's very impaired. Now, with treatment, some of these impairments are going to go away. His ability to walk is going to come back. His ability to climb stairs is going to come back. His ability to ride comfortably is going to come back. His ability to clean himself is going to come back. Right? So that's impairment and that's impairment rating. Right now, this impairment has a huge uh, effect on his activities of daily living and would get a very large impairment rating. That's why we do it at MMI. Okay? Now... Here's the thing. This injury looks gross, but these injuries, the injuries to the spine, these are the worst injuries that a person can have because this one recovers actually better than these do statistically. So the doctor has to understand exactly what the derangements are here and they have to assess them. So there, there is no more days of, oh, okay, I'm just going to palpate and here's what the person has. And here's what my opinion is. It's too easy to be objective today. There's too much information that allows you to be objective. So we know that these spinal ligament injuries, 
whether it's excessive motion with disc herniation or it's just excessive motion or it's just disc herniation. We know these are the number one cause of chronic pain and disability today. And so they're significant to work up. These are the most problematic injuries. And any provider that's not treating these the same as you would that MMA fighters fracture are really doing a disservice to the public. And the actual real disservice is when you under document. And when you under document, when your documentation as a doctor, just so you, you're completely clear on my, what, what I teach doctors, your documentation is what allows anybody to determine the benefits that the patient may be entitled to. So if they're hurt at work, they may have benefits. Benefits may be they get their bills paid, they get their care paid for, they get time off if needed, paid for. But it's all documentation that, that determines the benefits. When you have an injury case, you want to document and determine all of the injuries. And then you want to document, are these injuries permanent? That gets into the permanent impairment guides. What is an impairment? Impairments and injury. So you call them the permanent injury guides. So how is it permanent? Is it classified as permanent? If so, where? in what section of the book. It's very super simple to do. It takes like a minute. And you want to document that. And then of course you want to document other things. You want to document, hey, here's what we did. Here's the treatment that we did. Here's our outcome assessment procedures. We've taken this person now to the point where we think they're as good as they're going to be because we've done what? We've, we've performed treatment on them. Right? So, we took the patient in, the injury patient in. We did an exam, or we did a consult. We found out where their pain was, their numbness was. We started to equate it to a specific level because we know we're looking for damage. We're looking for the injury. We did a motor and a sensory patterns. We found that there was abnormal motor and sensory input here. We actually know that those go to very specific spinal levels. As a matter of fact, we can look at these spinal levels and we know exactly where these nerves come out. So if the five and six nerve is, is, is problematic, this is where the sixth nerve comes out. Fifth nerve comes out, fourth nerve, third nerve, second nerve, first nerve. This is where these nerves come out, right? So we know, gosh, we got to check. Do we have excessive motion here? And if so, how bad? Because that determines how badly damaged this spine was. Now we also know that, so we shoot the x-rays, we get a measured properly, we get our report, and we know exactly how damaged or how impaired this is. Now we do our treatment, right? Or we also, we also could go, hey, do we have a disc complication here? Once we know that, then we do our treatment. Now, no matter what that treatment is, it could be chiropractic care, it could be a combination of chiropractic care with physical rehabilitation. It could be that the person failed chiropractic, they failed physical rehabilitation, they failed injections, they failed uh, ablations, and now they're having a surgical procedure to try to fix the problem. So anywhere along the line, from, from the most conservative to the most aggressive treatment, anywhere along the line, Everyone has to know exactly what was damaged and is it permanent and is there a permanent impairment? So when you go to permanent impairment rating, now when you do the rating, you just, if you're using fifth edition, it's super simple. You actually go to these DREs and you find out, oh, they have alteration motion segment integrity. They get a 25% whole person impairment or they have more than 50% compression fracture. They get a 25% impairment. So remember I said the ones that you can see on Imaging are fracture, excessive motion, and disc herniation. So excessive motion qualifier right here. Herniation right here. Now, fractures all along the line. Now, here, category two, got ex you have a disc herniation that repaired and didn't have any radicular complaints at the end, 5 to 8%. What's the 8%? There's, a, there's abnormal findings of pain associated with it won't well, totally clear out but five percent asymmetrical range of motion five percent 
Disc herniation with radicular complaints, 15%. Alteration motion segment integrity, 25%. It's just that easy. That's all there is to it, right? Now, some will say, well, what, hey, what about the sixth edition? You go to Impair Master. Super, super simple. You sign in. I think this software costs like uh, uh, 40 bucks a month or something like that. You sign into it. Good. Once signed in, you actually go create a new report. Put a person's name in. Put their age in. Good. Put your name in. Save. Impairment. Cervical spine. Good. I got alteration motion segment integrity. I got it at a single level with, with uh, radicular complaints still intact. Good. Hit save and finish. Good. There's my impairment level. I cut and strip this right in. Bang. It's that easy. Now I go, okay, great. Let's delete that one. Oh, I don't know what I have. Maybe I have. So let's, let's delete. Yes. Good. So now I want to do an impairment. Let's say I got a cervical spine. I got uh, disc herniation in the cervical spine uh, at a single level. Um, good. But I don't have any radicular complaint with it. I just have that. Good. Now I'm going to the to the lumbar spine. Look at this. In the lumbar. So spine and pelvis. So I go to lumbar spine. It says, wow. Um, first of all, do you have any fractures? No. Do you have herniation or alteration motion segment integrity? Yeah, I got alteration motion segment integrity and I got uh, one level and I still got some radicular complaint with it. Boom. Save. Good. Here's my permanent impairment. It takes my cervical, takes my lumbar, combines it, and I've got a whole person impairment at 17%. 17% of this patient's activities of daily living are somehow going to be negatively influenced. How hard is that? Right? How hard is that to do? No. Uh, so we're going to delete this. Yes. Delete this. Yes. All right. Let's go a different route. Let's say that all I got is pain left. Wow. Pain-related impairment. Huh. Okay. Good. Spine. Yeah, cervical spine. I still got pain. So let's just go. Sorry. Let's go. Uh, okay, I got some pain. Good. Documented history of the injury. Uh, and I've got I've got actual pain. Good. Yes. Gosh, I got it in the lumbar spine too. Pain. Good. Non specific. I had the injury. Patient's got pain. Good. Save and finish. Good. Got a 4% whole person impairment rating. I stripped this out. I put it in the report. This stuff is way too easy. Right? Now, anytime that somebody's injured, everybody wants to know basically four or five things. They want to know what are the injuries? Are the injuries permanent? Okay, that's what are the injuries? That's your that's your diagnosis. I've got alteration, motion, segment, integrity. I've got ligament laxity. I've got a spinal instability at C4, C5. And that's your code. Uh, is it permanent? Yeah, it qualifies under the AMA guides, permanent impairment, fifth, fourth, fifth, sixth edition, whatever edition you want to use. Good. What's the impairment level? So whatever it is in the book. Good. What's there? Is there any duties under duress? That means things that the patient now can do, but it hurts them to do. Yeah, there are. What are they? Uh, due to the back condition, the patient can't drive long term in the car. So they used to be able to drive all day in the car. Now, after about four hours, they got to get out and stretch. And it sometimes causes spasms in their lower back. Can they do it? Yeah. Did they lose the ability to do it? No, but it's uncomfortable to do it. Those are called duties under dress factors. Loss of enjoyment of life. Wow, the person can't ride their bike anymore. They absolutely cannot do it. Their back condition flares up so bad and it irritates it so bad that they no longer can do it. Now they've lost the enjoyment of doing that for essentially the rest of their life. That's called loss of enjoyment of life factors. That's what they want to know. Are there injuries? Are they permanent? Are there DUDs or LOEs? That's it, doctors. It's that simple. Now, I do a lot of education because we make this stuff really simple. I, I do education in the smartinjurydoctor.com program. You may want to look at that program or call one of our staff 
today to find out about the special that we have going on on that program. For those of you that just want more information on topics like this, tune in to my uh, podcasts on iTunes, Google Play, Podbean, Spotify, TuneIn, Pandora. Tune in and listen more. Okay, at this point, normally what I would do is a question and answer. Uh, I can't do this today simply because I'm traveling. So that's the program. For those of you that actually have, do not have, sign, or have never signed up for services with spinal kinetics, I urge you to do it. You need to start testing and knowing where the patient's ligament injuries are. And I believe we have one of the best services in the country for doing that. So you call us today at 877-508-9729, or you visit us at thespinalkinetics.com. Doctors, I thank you very much today for your time and attention. I hope you learned something along the way about just how simple spinal impairment rating can be. Thank you.